be brief. Um, I want to talk about something a bit different from what has been discussed so far, and namely on a database that lists recombinant antibodies. So I'll start with a philosophical bit on validation, and I think this is important. This is a sentence. How do we validate this sentence? How do we declare that it's true? We will go to Geneva and check whether Pierre Croissant actually works in Geneva, check whether there is somebody at the address, this kind of things. But the other thing which is important is to, is to identify who is Pierre Croissant, by the way, because there may be several and maybe this is not the right one. So whenever we have a sentence like that we, that we want to validate, we have two elements. One is identification. Who are we talking about? And the other part is characterization. And when the sentence becomes antibody 9010 works in immunofluorescence experiments, the same stands true. Are we talking about the same antibody? Identification. What does it do exactly? Characterization. So in this presentation, I'll talk about what I feel is a badly unmet need in our community. And then I'll describe what we have done in Geneva to try to unleash the power of recombinant antibodies. And then I'll talk to each one of you because I think half at least of the people in this room, maybe even more, should consider collaborating with us. So let's start with uh, um, two researchers who have done experiments with two antibodies against the infamous MIC tag. And they are trying to see whether the results are comparable and so they're trying to see whether they use the same antibody. We're here into the identification uh, issue. Well, you know, if you type MCTAG in Cytab, which is a fantastic search engine, you find 1,800 antibodies. 500 of them are polyclonal, so each one of them is unique. If they use polyclonal antibodies, uh, they use different antibodies. 1,300 are monoclonal, and then you get these long list of names. 9B11, 71D10, 4A6. Let's look, for example, at 9B11. 9B11, 14 antibodies sold by three companies. Mm -hmm. There are, by the way, eight other 9B11 antibodies that correspond to antibodies against different antigens. Ah, that's quite some confusion. But then you can look at the rest of the list. There is a 71D10, a 4A6, and then you find 9010, and for people who work with antimic, they know that 9010, oh yes, that's the traditional, the typical antibody. So maybe if we use 9010, we use the same antibody. If we both use 9010, there are 519 entries sold by many companies. So probably, probably, you've been using the same antibody. But the 9010 antibody, hybridoma, actually, historical hybridoma has been sequenced three times and generated three different sequences. They differ by six amino acids. Maybe it's important for reactivity, maybe not. So, hmm, which one are you using? You don't know. And by the way, there are other anti-MIC antibodies derived from 9E10, like TA002, which is derived by CDR grafting. So it's 9E10, but not really 9E10. And there again, it's a different sequence. And you need to know. And this is the unmet need. My anti-MIC is not your anti-MIC. And my 9E10, even my 9E10 is probably not your 9E10. So there is a really enormous problem of identification of reagents in this blooming field of recombinant antibodies. So what have we done for that? We have created a database, and this database called ABCD, antibodies chemically defined. ABCD has collected for NAS a number of years the sequenced and published sequences of recombinant antibodies. It's all manually curated. It's linking very clearly to the target, uh, intended target of each antibody. And this ABCD database today con contains 26,000 entries. About 25,000 of them come from the literature or patents, and 1,000 have been deposited by people, uh, including us at the University of Geneva. Every identifier comes 
with a name like ABCD TA002. And each sequence generates a different ID. Whatever the difference is between two sequences, it will become two different IDs. Just because I think this may be of interest to you, then I, I'm going to talk about how you can use ABCD, the ABCD database. But just to complete the picture, we have done two other things. And this is standard. We have done a, a, a small company that is capable of producing these antibodies upon request. Many of them are not in a catalog at all because the market is very small. It's a drosophila antigen. It can be even worse than that. So um, we produce for academics because um, they need to get access to some of these very uh, uncommon antibodies. I'm making my disclosure. I'm a co-founder and shareholder of ABCD Antibodies SA. The other part which we have created, which could be of interest to many of you, is we have created the scientific journal, which is devoted to the characterization of antibodies. It's called Antibody Reports. It does just that. And maybe, you know, it's good to generate data. And of course, everybody trusts everybody. But the only way to really be able to trust somebody when they say, oh, and I have fully characterized my antibody is when they publish the data. Maybe you should publish in antibody reports. But how can you use the ABCD database itself? I can see two different scenarios. I think the second one is the most likely in this room. But typically, if you're a scientist or a small company, small in my experience is what fits this category, you can deposit an antibody sequence and the target name. And then what we will do is we will take your sequence, we will compare it to all the sequences that we have. And if it's unique, or if it's already there, we will tell you, oh, but this is already deposited by somebody else. And we will tell you what the ABCD identifier is for this uh, sequence. And if it's not, we will give you a new identifier. So you will be CA123, for example. And you can use that. And if you are selling in your catalog, you can say, this is AC123, which is directly derived from the sequence. And then you can decide whether the sequence can be revealed. Uh, we don't put the sequences online, but when researchers ask whether they can get the sequence, we check whether we are allowed to release it or not. And if we're allowed to release it, we release it. But if we're not allowed, we don't release. And then when you're a researcher, typically you're not going to produce and distribute. So you can ask us to do it. And we produce and distribute and we give royalties. But most people in this room are companies and some of you big companies and companies that produce and distribute their own antibodies. And let's be very clear, we know that none of you can give their sequences to any other third party. This is the only thing, the secrecy is almost the only thing that protects you from, from somebody just copying all your products. And that's the conundrum of this field where you have your sequence, which is the only real identifier, but you cannot release it. So if you're a company, what you can do is you can deposit an antibody and a target name. We have devised a system with a coding system that allows that you not to transfer the antibody sequence at any stage. So basically, you keep your sequence in-house. We send you a program. You can derive with this program a unique identifier derived from your sequence. There is no way somebody can take the identifier and move back to your sequence, then you send the identifier to us. And then we compare it to the identifiers of all other antibodies. And we can tell you whether your antibody is unique or not, give you either the existing identifier of this antibody or create a new identifier if it's a new antibody. And by the way, if anybody else any other day deposits the same sequence as you, we can warn you. Hmm, this antibody, which was supposed to be unique in your company, hmm, has just been proposed by somebody else. The information is, I know this is a big issue, it's really triple secure. So you generate a code and you never give the antibody sequence. The code is sent to us, but we don't reveal it, we keep it secret. And 
we have a system that basically makes the coding system evolve so that with time, uh, uh, people cannot even reuse the program to generate more codes. The program is changing all the time, the coding program. What you get is you get an ABCD identifier, and make no mistakes, you will start needing this one of these days. Um, the days where we can just say, oh, this is an antibody that comes from a catalog, these days are slowly coming to an end. Journals are starting to ask for better characterization of antibodies than just a name. They will need this. This is the only system that I can think of that will allow you to get an identification linked to your sequence without revealing your sequence. Your company name will be linked to the antibody because the point of listing these antibodies is also that, so that people can find them. And you can publish the characterization in antibody reports as long as the sequence is the antibody is listed as an entry. So this is really a proposal to many of you. And I really think individually, each of you, if you're capable of making this decision, you should consider it. This is something that could change the field and it would solve an issue, a problem that all of us have about identification of antibodies. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat>